Hi, my name is Mike with Side Effects, and today we'll be going over the Circle node. So let's drop down a geometry container and get started, and jump inside and give ourselves a circle. Now right off the bat, you can see that it creates a circle in our viewport, and that is exactly what the Circle node does, is it generates a circle using the specified values over here in the parameters. If we come up to the primitive type parameter over at the top, you can see that we're able to specify exactly how our circle is being generated. So right now it defaults to the primitive type, but if we change it to polygon, you now see that we have a 12-sided polygonal circle. You're also able to generate a circle out of NURBS curves and Bezier curves as well. But for now, we can go back to the polygon and move on to the rest of the parameters. So right underneath the primitive type is the orientation, and this controls along which plane the circle is oriented. Right now, it defaults to the XY plane and standing straight up, but you can also play with these values as well and control which plane your circle is generated on. You're given access to the XY, the YZ, and the ZX as well. Well, we can stick with XY and move on to the radius parameter. This allows you to control both the X and the Y radius of your circle independently. So you can see we're able to squash and stretch our circle along either axis by using these values. Underneath the radius is the center, and this allows you to transform your circle in the viewport. So as we move this value, let's say in the negative X, you can see that our circle moves accordingly. And so this allows you to place your circle anywhere you want. With your circle selected, you can also come into the viewport and hit enter to initialize the actual node itself, and you're able to move it in the viewport using these handles. All right, right underneath the center parameter is the rotate parameter, and as you might have guessed, this allows you to control the rotation of your circle. So as we rotate this, you can see that our circle rotates along our specified axes accordingly. It is important to note that even though the center of our circle is up and to the left a bit, it will always rotate around the center of the geometry. So moving the center is not the same as moving the pivot. So that's a good thing to be aware of. All right, moving on. Underneath this, we've got the uniform scale, which functions very similarly to the radius parameter, but instead controls both of them at once, allowing you to uniformly scale your circle up and down. Underneath that is the divisions parameter, which, in the context of the polygon primitive type, allows you to control exactly how many sides your circle has. So you can see if we crank this all the way up, we now have a circle with 50 sides. And conversely, if we go all the way down, we now have a triangle, really, with three sides. And this goes all the way down to one, which will simply give you a single point at the center of your circle. Or no, not at the center of your circle, at the edge of your circle. There we go. So for now, we can leave this at 12. There we go. Underneath that is the archetype, which as you can see defaults to closed. This is another way to control exactly how your circle is being generated. So if we were to change this to something like open arc, you can see that we lose that face in the middle, and our circle instead just becomes the perimeter line. If you pay close attention, you're able to look at the point numbers over here, and notice that we now have two overlapping point numbers, where when we had closed, it was only point number zero. But as you can see, changing it to open gives us two point numbers there, so this is no longer a complete circle. This effect is better illustrated when you come down here and begin adjusting the arc angles, which controls exactly where your circle begins and ends. Right now, it's a full 360 degree rotation, so it still looks like a full circle, but as we lower this value, you can see that less and less of our circle is being generated, until it only encompasses around 300 degrees, rather than the original 360. It's also important to note that even though our circle has technically become smaller, it still has the exact same number of divisions that we specified up here, so a good thing to be aware of. If we change the arc type from open arc to closed arc, you can see that we have our face back, but it still respects the value of our arc angle. And so using the closed arc arc type allows you to specify exactly how much of your circle is being generated while still giving you access to this polygonal face in the middle by way of creating a singular point in the center of your circle that allows you to form this wedge. If we change archetype from closed arc to sliced arc, you can see that we no longer have a multi-sided polygon, but instead just a series of triangles, with lines extending from the points to the center of the circle. For now though, we can simply change this back to closed, and you'll notice that our arc angle no longer comes into effect. You'll also have noticed two parameters that are grayed out right now, that being order and imperfect. Now these are disabled because they only wake up, so to speak, when your primitive type is either NURBS or Bezier. If we change to NURBS, you can see that our circle generates accordingly, and we're also given access to this order parameter. As we move this and pay attention to the circle in the viewport, you can see that the point numbers are rotating counterclockwise. And so by playing with the order parameter when you're generating either a NURBS or a Bezier circle, it allows you to control the order of the vertices that are being used to generate your circle. 
You can see that playing with this value can have some adverse effects on your NURB circle, since this looks very polygonal despite the fact that it's still NURBs, so be aware of some of the changes that might occur when you're adjusting this value. The imperfect parameter is basically telling the node that it's okay if this is not a perfect circle. But if we uncheck this, you can see that we lose access to the lower half of the parameters, and that strange distortion that we were getting earlier has been fixed up for us. There we go. Now, no matter how we play with the radius and stretch and squash our circle, it will maintain that perfect curvature. This has been the Circle Node. Thanks for watching.